this week, we are finally taking the time and going over the first of our prismatic subclasses, as the final shape is in less than one month, and we want to have ideas on strong builds from day one, which is what this video is going to be about. We're going to go over everything coming, and then we'll be making a build that you'll be able to use during the entire final shape campaign. With that being said, please subscribe if you want to keep seeing more builds as we head into the final shape and beyond. Like the video as it helps other people see my video. It helps the algorithm, which honestly will help me out a lot in turn. And comment what you're most excited about to use when it comes to Prismatic. And let's get right into this video. For our Prismatic Warlock, let's first look at the basic stuff. On Prismatic, you'll have access to all the glide options, plus blink from the Void subclass, as well as both healing and empowering rift alongside Phoenix Die from our Solar subclass. And these will be available to you when we first start the campaign, allowing you to mess around with Phoenix Dive a little bit in maybe ways that you wouldn't normally, because I know on Solar subclass, I don't run Phoenix Dive, but for Prismatic, I might run Phoenix Dive, depending on how it synergizes with some of the other fragments and aspects when we get later on into the build crafting options after we beat the raid and the campaign. Moving on to the juicy stuff itself first we need to talk about transcendence this is new and exclusive to our prismatic subclasses while playing on prismatic there'll be a new bar under your super bar that fills up when we do damage with light or darkness damage types light being arc solar and void darkness being strand and stasis once filled up you can activate transcendence and fully recharge your abilities and get a new grenade option for warlocks that is going to be freezing singularity throw a mass of void energy and stasis matter on impact it deploys a miniature black hole orbited by a halo of slowing ice after a short duration the black hole implodes suppressing and dealing heavy damage to all nearby targets this sounds cool no pun intended and i can't wait to use it moving on to our subclass options themselves starting with our solar options we have the new super song of flame which can't really be judged to yet because we haven't played with it we don't know how that's going to perform with the nerf coming to wells for our melee we have incinerator snap which everybody loves we also have healing grenades which is super nice as a warlock you'll be able to just still have some kind of healing capability and the new aspect hellion which gives us a new solar buddy to use for void we have the cataclysm nova bomb which is great for single target dps pocket singularity which is personally one of my favorite melees in the game due to its ability to knock back and spread volatile we also get vortex grenades which are my favorite void grenades and finally we get feed the void which will give us devour when we defeat targets with our abilities these options are among our starting options to pick from, meaning this is a basis for a starting day one build. For Arc, we have access to Storm Trance, which is great for ad clear. Chain Lightning for our melee, which is very good, as Chain Lightning can easily chunk bigger enemies and it can hit multiple times. Then we have Storm Grenades, which covers large areas of ad spawns and can do some very good damage. For our aspect, we have Lightning Surge, which is the slide to teleport and call down lightning melee. This is so good. I was playing PvP the other day and someone slid into me and my teammates did the lightning surge and wiped all three of us in one fell swoop. It is easily one of the better aspects that you can pair with this because obviously with our strand setup, we're going to get arcane needle, which is going to give us three melee charges, which is going to give us three lightning surges. They talked about it during the whole gameplay reveal and everybody's ready for it. So I'll make a build on that when it comes, but for now, this is just what we're going to do on day one. And for that, we next have to look at our stasis subclass. We have the Winter's Wrath Super, which is great for ad clear, ad control, and can do some good damage to those mini bosses. We get cold snap grenades, which makes sense due to Osmiomancy pulling into that particular grenade. We will get their melee penumbral blast, which is very good at single target freezing. And then we get Bleak Watcher, where we consume our grenade and throw out our little stasis turrets. And these are our other starting options, giving us another very good set of abilities to play with when we get Prismatic on day one. 
Finally, for Strand, we have the Needlestorm Stupor, which is amazing for single target damage. Threadling Grenades, which will give us more little buddies to make and use. Arcane Needle, which as I mentioned earlier, is going to give us those three melee charges and allows us to sever targets. And then we get Weaver's Call, where when we use our class ability, we get to make more Threadlings. This build gives us three out of the five buddies for the Warlocks, and I wish... I can think of a way to make us be able to get the five out of five because I think that would be hilarious to run around with Arc Buddies, Bleak Watchers, the new Hellion, Threadlings, and the Child of the Old God. That would be hilarious to me. And I'm sure that once we start playing, we're going to find ways to do that. But right now sitting here, I can't think of a way and I, I absolutely cannot wait to figure it out when Prismatic comes out to us. For the day one build itself, it is very straightforward. Forward. We take Winter's Wrath for Ad Encounters and Nova Bomb for boss encounter for grenade i'm gonna run cold snap grenades to help us control the battlefield and those legend difficulty campaign missions and the same thing goes for pocket singularity if enemies are going to be near us you're going to just throw it out knock them back and spread a little bit of volatile i'm going to take either healing rift or be cool and take phoenix dive because that just sounds like the cool thing to do and we only have the two aspects bleak watcher and feed the void but these two together are going to be amazing with devour active we get health back and grenade energy back with each defeat, meaning we're going to get more and more stasis turrets out at one time. Currently, in game, there is a way to kind of simulate this, and that would be using Berry Bloodline in combination with our stasis subclass. I did this, and the amount of grenade energy that I was generating was insane, and only makes me more excited for this when Prismatic comes to us in the final shape. For our fragments, we have a bunch but again we're only going to look at the starting ones for this build according to the post about prismatic it looks like we're going to get the ability to use five fragments with bleak watcher and feed the void which will allow us to use all five of the starter options which include facet of dawn where powered melee hits against targets make you radiant and melee final blows make both you and nearby allies radiant radiant is nice to have gives you a nice little damage buff we then have facet of hope while you have an elemental buff, your class ability regenerates more quickly. Elemental buffs are things like Devour, which we get from our Aspect, or Radiant, which we're going to get from the fragment we just went over. We have Facet of Protection. While surrounded by enemies, you're more resistant to incoming damage. This is just nice as everybody knows that the Legend campaign can get a little difficult at the end as they're full of enemies, so the damage resistance is super, super nice. Facet of Purpose. Picking up an Orb of Power grants either Amplified, Restoration, Frost Armor, Woven Mail, or an Overshield based on the damage type of your equipped super. We're going to either get the Overshield from Void, which is super nice as that gives us a 50% damage reduction, or we're going to be getting Frost Armor, which we still have no clue about currently, but I believe these still count as those elemental buffs, meaning we're going to get more class ability energy back from Facet of Hope. And then finally, we have Facet of Ruin increases the size and damage burst of stasis when you shatter a crystal or a frozen target and increases the size of a solar ignition our bleak watchers will benefit greatly from this as it'll freeze targets and then we can shatter them for more damage when it comes to making this day one build we're going to want exotics to really pull this thing together obviously a good choice will be the new class items that can have parts of other two exotics but a you're going to need luck to get the two that you need and B, we're not going to be able to get it until after the campaign, so we can't really use it for a day one option. However, we currently have exotics in our toolkit, essentially, that will make this build work all the same. We can obviously take Osmio Mancy Gloves for the additional Cold Snap Grenade and Grenade Regen when we freeze a target and have double the Bleak Watcher turrets at all times. We can also take Verity's Brow for massive grenade damage and regeneration as well, no matter what grenade we're using, which is also really, really helpful. And even if you want to play off all the Void stuff, you can just take Nezarek Sin, and that is also a really, really good option if you want to have really good ability regeneration. Now, there's probably a bunch more options that I can't even really think about right now, but those are like the three that really stick out to me that I'm going to be pairing with this build, especially Osmio Man gloves as again double cold snap double turrets able to lock down those legend missions a lot easier it's just going to make it an overall easier and more enjoyable experience at the end of the day now i also know bungie said that as we play the campaign we're going to unlock stuff very very 
quickly, which makes sense, as in the past, Strand took a while, Stasis took a while, and they don't want Prismatic to take a while. But this right here is what we're going to have access to at the beginning of the first day of Final Shape, once we get into that first mission. And again, I'm super excited for this. This is a build crafter's like wet dream, essentially. I will say, however, I did see the list of exotic perks that we're going to be using for the class items. And I can say that I'm not too impressed. There's nothing on there that looks like too crazy, aside from the obvious choices of like Assassin's Cowl and Synthesis. Like that is a very obvious choice, but I can't wait to get in, get these for myself and play around and see what perks I get on them because that's going to be super, super fun. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, please subscribe as it helps me out a ton and as does liking the video as it's going to get other people to see this. And of course, comment down below what you are most excited to see when it comes to the final shape, whether that be the exotic pairings on your class item or just the prismatic subclass itself. And with that, I will see you guys in the next video.